Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, I know you have already have three lectures. In, in you have know the uh, protect area system as a whole, and the uh, national parks and the nature reserves. And today we will have uh, to introduce to another kind of protect areas, the scenic area and the World Heritage Site. So uh, let's see our today's uh, outlines. There's four uh, parts. The first is the Shan Shui culture. The second is the scenic and historic areas. The third, we will introduce the World Heritage. And the fourth, we will give two cases about the scenic area and the World Heritage Site. So uh, before we uh, talk about the scenic area, uh, we will talk about the Shan Shui culture and the spiritual connection between man and nature. Uh, according to Professor Xian Ning Gao from the Peking University, uh, the spiritual connection between man and nature can be divided into four stages. So the, the stage of the fishing, hunting, and the gathering, and the stage of agricultural civilization, the stage of industrial civilization, and the stage of ecological civilization. So uh, these four uh, stages of the uh, spiritual connections are quite different. So in the first stage, people uh, know very little about the nature. They relied heavily on the nature. So they worship everything, every element of the nature. So this is the, the uh, special character of the first stage. And to the uh, second stage is the agricultural civilization. So people no longer to uh, worship every element of the nature. They, they begin to select some, uh, some element of the nature, like the famous mountains or rivers to worship. So uh, Professor Xian Ning Gao used the emotional relationship, this kind of words. It's very interesting. So the, sec the third uh, civilization is the industrial civilization. So uh, people learn much more of the nature, and uh, uh, we can study nature, and uh, we think we can manage nature. So this is kind of a rational relationship. And the ecological civilization is the uh, we realize that people should regard the nature as the uh, equal position. So this is a kind of ethical relationship. Okay. So since ancient China has a long period during the stage of agricultural civilization, so during the, this period, we developed a very special culture named the Shan Shui culture. And uh, there are specific spaces for the Shan Shui culture. We name it uh, famous mountain scenic areas. In, in Chinese, we call it uh, Ming Shan Feng Jing Chu. And uh, uh, Professor Zhou Weichuan from uh, Tsinghua University, uh, he has studied the uh, famous mountain scenic area for many years, and he uh, uh, analyzed the spiritual connection forms in the uh, scenic area. And next, we will uh, uh, to see the different kind of spiritual connections between man and nature in the scenic area. So the first, the first spiritual connection between man and nature in the scenic area, we call natural worship. So uh, also the Feng Shan. Uh, Feng Shan also refers to as the Feng and the Shan sacrifices. So was an official ritual offered by the emperor to pay respect to heaven and earth. So usually Feng is the pay uh, respect to heaven and the Shan is the respect to the earth. So this is uh, the kind of worship, nature, natural worship. 
So you see the picture at the, uh, this picture shows the Asian people choose five uh, mountains as the sacred mountains. We call it Wu to worship. And the uh, right picture shows one of the sacred mountain, Xi Yue Hua Shan. And uh, the temple is a place where the emperor worships the mountain, and also the place where the, the emperor, uh, from the starting point, to climb the mountain. So the second uh, of form of the spiritual connection between man and nature, we call it uh, uh, religious activities. So it, it, is, it is in Qing Dynasty or before Qing Dynasty. Uh, people imagine the mountain as places where God lived. So later with the support of emperors, Taoism and uh, Buddhism developed in these famous mountains. So you can see the pictures here. Uh, this picture shows the, uh, our oldest uh, myth stories about uh, uh, the East Sea fairy mountains. In Chinese, we call it Teng uh, Lai Xian Jing. And the, the West one shows the uh, West uh, Kunlun Mountains myth stories. So all these are the ancient myths to show the spiritual connection between man and nature. So the third spiritual connection between man and nature, we call it the landscape morality of Confucianism. So in Chinese, we call it Shan Shui Bi De. So the Confucianism believes that uh, nature's good character is the mother of all humans' good character. So, it, so the Confucianism has a famous saying, 仁者乐山,智者乐水. Uh, this means the virtuous enjoy mountains and the wise enjoy water. So the Confucius believes that uh, the mountain has the uh, same quality as the virtuous people, and the water has the same quality as the wise people. So this is kind of a spiritual connection. And and this is the entrance of Mount Taishan, where the Con Confucius uh, climbed the mountain through this area, and uh, he got the uh, inspiration from the mountain and also from the natural sceneries. So the fourth spiritual con connection between man and nature, we call it landscape exact activities. So uh, this kind of activity become very popular in the six dynamics. Uh, in six dynamics, many unsuccessful but famous officials and scholars uh, come to the mountains to seek comfort and to get far away from the politics. So uh, you see the person here, Xi uh, Lingyun, do you know the the scholar, very famous in the uh, Sixth dy Dynasty. So uh, he, is, he was very fond of climbing, climbing mountains. And he even invented the climbing shoes. So when you go upside the mountain, you can take off the front heel. And if you go downside the mountain, you can take off the back heel. So very interesting invention about the, about the shoes. So uh, also you see the picture. This is uh, according to the famous um, scholar named uh, Ou Yangxiu in Song Dynasty. Uh, from his writing, we can know that uh, the landscape aesthetic ac activities, not only uh, done by the uh, scholars or officials, but also by the public. The, the root, root peoples also enjoy the landscape aesthetic activities. Uh, the fifth uh, spiritual connection between man and nature, uh, we call it landscape art activities. So these activities also uh, connected with the development of landscape aesthetic activities. So many uh, landscape art developed, like the landscape gardens, 
poetry and uh, paintings. So you see the pictures here. Uh, the painter got inspiration from the scenery of the Huangshan Mountain, very similar. And also, uh, you see here, uh, we say the Fan Zhongye in Song Dynasty. He, when he, after he visited the, the uh, Dongting Lake, he write the uh, Yue Yang Lou Ji. And in this uh, article, there's a very famous saying, uh, uh, the meaning is that a person should be the first to uh, cons concern the affairs and to be the last to concern the, uh, to be the last to enjoy oneself. So he tried to connect the natural beauty, natural scenery to the uh, life thinking. So this is kind of spiritual connection between man and nature. So there's other kind of spiritual connection between man and nature, like the academic culture and also the scientific researches. So uh, all these spiritual connection happened in the famous mountain scenic areas. So uh, today, some forms have disappeared, like the feng shan. Uh, some forms still developed, uh, such as the landscape aesthetic and the scientific explorations. And since the uh, famous mountain scenic area is so important, so it contains so many spiritual connections, uh, we should uh, be well we should uh, well protect these areas. So this is about the Shanshui culture. Then we will uh, to talk about the scenery and the historic area. So to, in order to protect the famous mountain scenic area in the ancient time, the central government of China established uh, a new protect area type in 1982, which is called uh, Fengjing Mingsheng Chu. Here we translate into scenic and historic areas. Here Fengjing related to scenic and uh, Mingsheng related to historic. Uh, in this part, we will uh, uh, talk about three parts. First, introduction of the scenic and historic area. Then we will talk about the issues of protection and management in the scenic area. Uh, the third is the, we will discuss the position of the scenic area. So first, the definition of the scenic and historic area. You can see uh, in the definition, the scenic and historic areas are natural and cultural heritage protected areas established by the state according to law. Based on natural landscape, nature and culture are integrated. They have comprehensive functions and uh, comprehensive values. So from the, the definition, we can learn at least the two characters of the uh, scenic area. The first special character is the uh, protected resource, the resource type of the scenic area. So it is not only the natural elements, but also the cultural elements. And the natural elements and the cultural elements are integrated. So this is quite different from the resources about uh, uh, nature reserves. Another very special character of the uh, scenic area is about the function. The function is so comprehensive. It's not only the ecological protection, the scientific researches, but also the cultural inheritance and the aesthetic enlightenment and the regional promotions. So these, these comprehensive function is also a special character of the scenic area. It's quite different from the nature reserve. You, you know the nature reserve uh, uh, 
emphasis more on the ecological protection and the scientific researches. But here we uh, is a co very comprehensive uh, function, including the cultural inheritance and uh, the regional protection, the regional promotion. Uh, then we will see the number and the distribution. There's two level, two level of the uh, scenic area, the, the national level and the, the provincial level. So the first uh, national scenic area is established in uh, 1982. And from then on, we have nine batches of the national scenic areas and a totally 244 sites. It covers about uh, 100,000 100, square kilometers. And also it has a provincial, uh, provincial scenic area, about uh, 700 sites, covers an area of 90,000 uh, square, uh, 90, square kilometers. Uh, if you look at the map of the the uh, distribution of this scenic area, you will see that uh, most of the sites is located in the east or in the south of China. So this is a quite a uh, special uh, character of the uh, scenic area. Then we will talk about the protection and the measurement of the scenic area. Uh, when we talk about the protection and the management, we usually refer to four issues, the resource, the recreation, the community, and the management system. So the four elements connected together to form a whole system. So when we talk about the uh, protection and the management of the scenic area, we will talk uh, related to these four issues. So we will, we will uh, introduce one by one. The first is the resource type for the scenic area. So you will see the resource type of the scenic area is not only the natural resources like the mountains, caves, rivers, lakes, seashores, but also we, the, the resource includes the cultural resources like the sacred places, emperor and the notable tombs, grottos, memorial places, this kind of cultural resources. So all these natural and cultural resources is connected with the uh, in spiritual connection with man and nature. So this is uh, the very special character of the resource types. The second issue is about the vegetation. Uh, we, we always know that the scenic area uh, play a very important role in the visitation. And we can see the number, the data in 2017. The whole nation has the visit number is 5 billion. And in the 5 billion, the 1.4 billion is the visitors to national scenic areas. So the visitors in the national scenic areas is about 29% of the total number of visitors. So you can see how important the scenic area play in the visitation. And also scenic area play a very important role in the international visitation. It about 20% of the international visitors come to the national scenic area. Since they, because they have so many visitors, so it, in peak time, there's usually congestions. But this kind of phenomena happened before the epidemic. So after epidemic, this kind of phenomena uh, will be um, changed. So the, the managers will use a lot of management measures to control the visit number usually use these smart systems to manage, to monitoring and manage the visitor numbers. 
the, the, the third issue is about the local community sustainable development. Uh, as we all know that there's a lot of people living inside and around the scenic areas. So people can get benefit from the visitation of the scenic area. So uh, this is a picture about uh, uh, the local community in Huangshan scenic area. The village uh, benefit a lot from the scenic spots uh, operated by themselves. The fourth issue is about the uh, uh, management system. So we, we usually think that the laws and the plans is the two important uh, measures to control, to, uh, to support the management. So the, the scenic area has the regulation in 2006, uh, and also the general management for the scenic area, for the national scenic area, should be approved by the state council. So, so the level of the plan is quite high. So after we know the characteristics, the characters of the scenic area and the protection and management situations, now we are uh, come to the uh, questions. So you know we are now, uh, our country is now building the new uh, protect area system. So the protect area system, there's, there's, is, uh, there are three kinds of protect areas, the national parks, the nature reserves, and the natural parks. So do, what do you think, uh, what is the position of the scenic and historic areas should be placed in the three type of protect areas? So, uh, you know, some experts suggest that uh, the scenic and the historic area should be in the natural parks. So, uh, because the ecosystem value is not very high in the scenic and historic area. But other experts think it's not uh, appropriate because the high value of the resources of the nature and the culture integrated resources. So if we name it as the natural parks, so where is the cultural values? So maybe it's not very appropriate to put the scenic area in the natural park. So this, here we have three alternatives. The first alternative we can put the scenic area in the natural park. So this is one alternative. The second alternative, we think the scenic area is the uh, separate uh, type. It is the same as the national park, the nature reserve, and the, the natural parks. And the, the third alternative, the scenic area, so the the, the, na the nation should have the new protect system. So one protect system should be for the nature, one should be the culture protection system. And uh, we should add an, an, a third protection system for the nature, nature and the culture protection system. So if we have this kind of protection system, the scenic and historic areas can be in the natural and cultural protection system and not inside in the nature protection system. So which alternative do you prefer? I will leave it as your homework. So um, we have finished the, the introduction of the Shanshui culture and also the scenic and historic area. So then we will introduce the World Heritage. Here's also three parts, the background of World Heritage, the China's World Heritage, and also the relationship between the scenic and historic area and the World Heritage Site of China. First is the background of World Heritage. So 
do you know the most special concept of the World Heritage is, is what? We think that the, the, the concept of the universal application is very special. Uh, the World Health Site is not owned by the, uh, the, the nation where the World Heritage is located, but it belongs to the people all over the world. So this is one special character of the World Heritage Site. It belongs to the people all over the world, not only the country where he locate, the, the World Heritage is located. So another special character is the outstanding universal value the World Heritage Site contains. So the value is so important so it is at the top of the value system. So the value is even uh, impo more important than other international protected areas like the Ramsar uh, sites or the biosphere uh, reserves or the international jewel parks. So the World Heritage Site, the value is most important. So this is another special character of the World Heritage Site the outstanding universal value. Uh, for the beginning of the World Heritage Site, it, it's um, about a, um, a construction of the uh, a dam in the Egypt. So when the dam, if the dam is uh, constructed, the temple, the Ab Ab symbol temple will be flooded. So the government of Egypt asked for help from the UNESCO. And the UNESCO organized a campaign to uh, protect the temple and moved it to a higher uh, places. So in, during this kind of campaign, it, it cost uh, 800,000 dollars, US dollars. So half of the money was donated by uh, 50 countries. So this is kind of international cooperation for the uh, heritage protection. And after that, there, there's, there are other successful stories about the heritage protection and uh, later lead to the uh, World Heritage Convention in 1972. Uh, and the World Heritage Con Convention is the the most successful con international convention with the number of state parties about 194. This is the largest number of state parties among the all international conventions. So next year will be the uh, 50 celebration, 50 year celebration of the Uni uh, World Heritage Convention. So there will be a lot of uh, activities. So about the ca classification of World Heritage, do you know how many types of the World Heritage? How many types? Have you ever heard about the World Heritage site? Do you know how many types of the World Heritage? Can somebody tell me, anybody <laughs> know? You, you don't, have, have, have you ever heard about uh, the type? N no? <laughs> so I will, I will tell you the, the uh, please. Uh, three types. So. Very good. So you, <laughs> very good. You will see the three types of the uh, world heritage, the, the natural heritage, the cultural heritage, and also the mixed culture and her natural heritage. So you will see the numbers. I, the total number is more than 1,000. But the, the number between the three types are quite different. The cultural heritage is more than the cultural heritage, 
and even more than the uh, mixed culture and natural heritage. So we can see we should uh, change the imbalance situation to uh, protect more natural heritage and the mixed heritage. And this is the uh, Every, every year, there will be 20 or 30, 30 sites to increase, the, added to the list. There's also uh, criteria for the uh, assessment of the outstanding universal value. So there's uh, totally 10 criteria. The first to the sixth criteria is for the cultural heritage. And the seven to the ten criteria is for the natural heritage. And in 1992, the World Heritage Committee has added a new type of the cultural landscape to the cultural heritage. So it's not the new type of the whole, but it's the, the new type in the cultural heritage to emphasize the combination work of nature and the man. So there are three types of the cultural landscape. The first one is the landscape designed by man, like the gardens, the parks. The second is the organically evolved landscape, like the uh, agricultural landscape or the industrial la landscape. So the third one is the associated cultural landscape like the sacred mountains. So this, these are the three types of the cultural landscape to emphasize the combined works of nature and man. So this is uh, some related to our scenic areas. This, then we will uh, talk about China's world heritage. Uh, China has adopted the, the World Heritage Convention in 1985. And uh, in 1987, we have the first the six World Heritage Sites. They are the Great Wall, the Mount Taishan, and the uh, Mogao Caves, and uh, others. So currently, we have 56 World Heritage Sites. Is the rank of the uh, the, the, the second one, the first one is Italian. But we have the uh, most uh, natural heritage and the mixed heritage. So all the, the, the natural heritage and the, the mixed heritage, we rank the first in the world. This is the value of the natural heritage and the mixed heritage of, of China. So you can see that our heritage covers all the four uh, criteria, the natural beauty, the geology and the land forms, the ecosystem and the biodiversity. For the status of conservation, according to the IUCN assessment, they, they think uh, the, the international average level is in the left side and the right side is the uh, Chinese uh, natural and mixed heritage conservation status. So you can see uh, our, our country's uh, conservation is better than the international average level. Uh, in the uh, world average level, the critical side is 7% and the significant concern side is uh, 30%. And in our country, there's no critical site, and uh, the uh, significant concern only 11%. So it's better situation in our country's world natural and mixed heritage. Then we will talk about the relationship between the scenic and historic area and the world heritage. So we can uh, see in two aspects. The first aspect is in terms of quality, uh, quant quantity. The second is the quality. So from the terms of uh, uh, quantity, so uh, they are to totally, they have 56 World Heritage Site. And uh, uh, 
32 World Heritage Sites is rela are related to the scenic and historic areas. So the scenic and historic area play a very important role in the uh, World Heritage Site. And to the terms of uh, quality, we can say that the scenic and historic area play a very important role in the cultural landscape and the mixed uh, World Heritage Site. You can see that, that all the five cultural landscape heritage of China are related to scenic and historic areas. So you see the, the West Lake, uh, the uh, Hani Rice Terrace, the Huashan rock, uh, art, uh, rock Art, the Mount Lushan and Mount Huangshan, uh, Mount Wutaishan, all these uh, cultural heritage sites are um, scenic and historic area of China. So this is the one aspect. Another aspect is that uh, all the four mixed heritage sites of China are related to the scenic and historic areas of the Mount Taishan, Mount Emei, Mount Huangshan, and Mount Wei. So these four mountains are mixed heritage and also the national scenic areas. So from the two uh, terms of quality and the quantity, we can know that the scenic and historic area play a very important role in the World Heritage Site. So this is the introduction of the World Heritage Site. So after introduce the scenic area and the World Heritage Site, we have the two, uh, we prepared two cases to show how to protect and manage the scenic and historic areas. So first case is about uh, Mount Taishan. So we will talk about the six uh, topics. Uh, the background. Uh, Mount Taishan is located in Shandong province. I, I don't know where, if you have been to Mount Taishan. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, in the uh, Ta'an city, and uh, in the ancient times, uh, the Mount Taishan is one of the five sacred mountains, and uh, ranked the first of the five sacred mountains. And in the ancient times, there's, there are many emperors come to worship the heaven, named, named Fengshan. So there's, uh, there are 13 emperors to uh, come to worship the mountain and by themselves. And there's also 24 emperors to send their officials to uh, offer the sacrifice. So we can see it is very important in the ancient uh, China. The mountain is so important. And in 1982, the, the mountain was, was uh, is established as a national scenic and historic area. And in 1987, it was listed as a World Heritage Site. It's the first six World Heritage Site. And it, it is also the first mixed World Heritage Site, the natural and the cultural uh, heritage. So you, you can see the uh, criteria of the heritage. So Mount Taishan meets all the six cultural criteria. So this is quite rare even in the world. So the, we can s see that the cultural value of the mountain Taishan is very high. It meets all the six criteria of the cultural heritage. And it also meet the uh, the seven the, uh, the seven criteria, which means the natural scenery is very beautiful. 
So when you see the character of the mountain, it is a, a very classic case of the nature and the culture combined. Uh, the south slope of the mountain is is a three level, and the landform is three level, and the Asian people combined the three level landform with the Taoism's vision of the human world and the heaven. So, which is to mean the, that the 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 lowest level people think this is the world for the humans, and the mid level we think is the midway to the heaven, and the top the, the top level. We think it's the heaven, so this is a kind of combi combination. The nature and the culture are combined, and very smartly, sm smartfully. Uh, for the resource protection, uh, we use the stone inscription as the case. There are uh, more than 2,000 and 200 stone inscriptions in Mount Taishan. Uh, some are left by the emperors, like the uh, Da Guan Feng. There's a lot of emperors leave their uh, stone in inscriptions. Uh, some are left by the religious people, like the uh, Jing Shi Yu, the diamond Sutra Valley, and others are left by scholars or visitors. So there's many kinds of stone inscription, and the history is very long, from the Qing Dynasty to uh, uh, to Ming Qing and to current days. So all these stone inscriptions not only have the high value of the history, but also high value of the artist. So when we talk about the protection of this stone inscription, uh, we usually pay more attention on the stone inscription itself. But uh, in our study, we think uh, should uh, to uh, connect the stone inscription to the uh, around the natural environment, so they are they should be looked in as the whole situation. For example, as the uh, Diamond Sutra Valley, when we help uh, when we protect the uh, the, uh, the stone inscription, we should also uh, study the water situation and to protect it from. Uh, from the water erosion, or to let the, to let them uh, flow on the surface. So this is kind of research about how to protect the stone inscription. Another uh, research about the stone inscription is the interpretation. Uh, usually, uh, we use the. Uh, interpretation board or signs to show the information, but the effect is not so good. So we think the information is very complicated about the stone inscription, especially in Da Guan Feng area. The uh, the the inscription are so dense density, so different uh, dy dynasties are covered together. So people cannot uh, uh, tell one dynasty from another one. So we suggest to use the uh, high technologies to show the uh, different uh, uh, dynasties' stone in inscription and to uh, interpret the stone inscription better. Uh, for the visitations in in Mount Taishan, there's a lot of visitors, uh, about uh, three million one year, so it's a very large visit visitor numbers. So uh, in the peak time, the uh, so. 
So in peak times, there's always uh, there are always uh, congestions. So we in our study we uh, choose some uh, places to where the congestions uh, happened, and uh, to monitor the visitor densities. So through our study, we can know the uh, spatial and the temporal distribution of the visitors, and to uh, give the measurement suggestions where and uh, when we can we should control the visitor number. About the community development, uh, the mountain is uh, in the history. The mountain always have a close relationship about uh, the mountain and the surrounding areas. Uh, in different uh, uh, dynasty, the when the emperor uh, climbed the mountain, there will be a service place at the foot of the mountain to to service the the people. So different dynasty, they choose different uh, site for the service point. But uh, until the Song dynasty, they fixed uh, the, the service point to the Dai temple, Dai miao. And uh, the Ta'an city is developed based on the Dai temple. So uh, in current days, we can see that the the city, the urban area is e expanding, and uh, it is uh, developed very very fast. So we think in our study, we think it is important to control the landscape from the from the top of the mountain to see the the, the regional landscape. So we do the visual sensitive analysis and also the construction suitability analysis to give the suggestions how to control or where to control the uh, development of the communities. Uh, this is the case of Mount Taishan. And the second uh, case is about uh, Mount Huangshan. And we also have the six uh, topics. Uh, Mount Huangshan is so beautiful scenery, has so many beautiful sceneries. So in the history, it also attracted many people come to visit the site. And uh, they, there are many uh, artists and uh, uh, painters so the they developed the uh, Huangshan Hua Pai, the kind of uh, painting school of Huangshan. So in um, 1982, it became the first uh, uh, national scenic areas, and also in 1990, it became the World Heritage Site. It is also a mixed World Heritage Site. Uh, meets the criteria 2, 7, and 10. The area is about 160 square kilometers, with the buffer zone about 490 square kilometers. So the buffer zone is the, there are five uh, local towns So uh, our protection and management are based on the value identification. So the value identification is very important in the protection and the management. So for Huangshan, there's three uh, kind of values. For the uh, criteria 10 is about the biodiversity value. And for the uh, criteria Seven is about the natural scenery value, and for the criteria two is about the landscape art and the landscape paintings. So we think these three values are not separated. 
we should think it as a whole situation, a system, because based on the uh, biodiversity, the natural scenery can be so beautiful, and uh, based on the natural scenery, they have uh, developed the landscape aesthetics and the art and the paintings. So these three values are connected as the whole system. So when we see the value as a system, we protect them and uh, manage them as a whole system. Uh, this is about a uh, protection of the cultural landscape. Uh, in Huangshan, in the past, uh, we protect the natural scenery in the environment, in, in the outside environment. But we protect and uh, exhibit the uh, paintings in the indoor museums. So they are separated, protected. So we think in our study, we think that they are not appropriate to, to understand the relationship between the uh, natural scenery and uh, the uh, the natural scenery and the paintings. So we uh, suggest uh, a new concept about the special aesthetic area to uh, to see the in this place. People can not only see the natural scenery, but also the uh, cultural values about the art artist, the right, the paintings. For example, uh, there there a famous paint, painter Xu Zhuang in Huangshan. She, he lived in there for many years in Pipong, the area. So he has many masterpieces about the sceneries. And we can, when when we take the visitors to the special aesthetic areas, we show the visitor not only the sceneries but also the paintings. So this connected the culture and the nature together. The visitors can uh, better understand the cultural landscape, and uh, will promote the protection. So although the, uh, the Huangshan Mountain is a scenic area, it has very high uh, value of the biodiversity. So, uh, but the area of the scenic area is uh, uh, relatively small. It's about 160 square kilometers. So uh, it may be not enough for some large animals. The habitat is not, not large enough. So we also studied to uh, connect the mountain Huangshan to the nearby nature reserves. So we, we studied the possible corridors and also give some suggestions on the uh, local community's uh, construction along the corridors. Here about the visitor uh, experience, I want to share with you the visitor number prediction. So you see, uh, when we uh, prepare the management plan for Huangshan in 2002, we got the data from the uh, 1979 to 20, uh, 20 uh, two, 2002, about uh, 20 years visitor number. So at the year of 2002, the visitor number is about 1.2 millions, 1.2 millions. And uh, we should uh, uh, do the visitor number prediction in the next 20 years. At the, the year of 2002, we will predict we would predict the number in 2020. So this is how we predict. We use different kind of method to predict. And we have different uh, results. The visit, visit number is very important because the, the, the managers should use the 
number as their service to, to plan their service. But the prediction is also very difficult because it will be impacted by many factors. So uh, in our plan, we uh, have this kind of result like the 2 million or 3, three million people will visit in 2020. So do you know how many visitors now in Mount Huangshan after 20 years, after, uh, after near 20 years? So do you can guess how many visitors before the epidemic? How many visitors? After 20 years, at the, t at the year of 2002, it's 1.2 million. And uh, in our plan, we predict there will be 2 million or 3, 3 million. So do you think how many visitors now in 2019, before the epidemic? Please guess. Just give me a number. How many? Five million. Five million. Good. <laughs> so you think it's, it's uh, maybe five times? Good. Other, do you have another kind of guess? can be lower. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's close. We will see. 3.5 million. So you see three times, not five times. But, but it's very close. So you will see how fast the visit number developed in the national scenic areas. But after the epidemic, the situation changed a lot. So if we do the visitor prediction in our plan, we should think a lot of factors. So this is a kind of situation. Very good. And also uh, about the visitor experience and the community development. So when we do the plan for the uh, scenic area, it's not only to think about the, uh, the uh, resource protection and the visitor experience. It should also think about the community development. So when we do the plan for the Mount Huangshan in 2002, there's three problems about the uh, visitation and the community development. The one is the visitor congestions because the visitors are limited in the south area and and also because they limited in the south uh, area so the imbalance the community benefit only the south community can benefit from the visitation and other places they cannot get the benefit so the third uh, problem is the uh, local people they operate the small uh, visita visitation spots and these spots are not uh, operated very well uh, because lack of the visitations. So we want to solve the three problem by one solution. So the one solution is a new tourism route so from the, from the south to the north. So for, and then we can uh, use a a loop traffic to connect the south and the north. So by this kind of new tour route sy system, we, uh, the congestion problem can be solved because there's more visitation areas. And the imbalance, the benefit can be solved. Uh, people in this area or the, this area can also get the benefit from the visitation. And there's a third problem that of the touring spots, uh, we can connect the spots by the uh, traffic service. So the 
visitation number can be improved and they can be under the unified management. So we use one solution to solve the three problems. So this kind of uh, uh, solution, we can call it as the strategies to, uh, to change the, the situation uh, at the very beginning point. So this is the today's all uh, contents. So we come to the summary. So in our uh, lecture, we have four topics. Uh, the first one is what is the characteristics of the scenic and historic area in China? And the second is what is the characteristics of the world heritage in China? The third one is what is the relationship between scenic and historic areas and the World Heritage in China. And the fourth one is how to protect and manage the scenic and the historic area and the World Heritage site in China. So all this is the today's uh, topics. So here is the homework. So as we mentioned before, what is the position of the scenic and historic areas in the new protected area system? So we have three alternatives. So which one will you prefer and why you prefer this one? We, we will leave you as the homework. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. <laughs>